Pinterest has gone through some pretty wild changes over the last couple of years, which we really need to talk about before we start our keyword research. In April of 2019, not long after I became a Pinterest manager, Pinterest became a publicly traded company. And back then there was tons of speculation about how the platform would change from that point forward. And now we're seeing some of the biggest changes roll out, which all surround Pinterest wanting to be a more shoppable platform. So what does this have to do with Pinterest SEO? Well, a few of the tools that we were using to do our SEO research are either hidden or have completely disappeared. Namely, the guided search tool, also known as the keyword bubbles that pop up right above your search results. These were completely replaced with these two options, shop and explore, and this happened gradually throughout 2020. So 99% of the time when you search, you're not gonna get the keyword bubbles, you're gonna get explore and shop. These changes also mean that users are searching differently on Pinterest. So we have to adjust our methods a little as things change. Before we start collecting keywords, I want to give you a quick overview of how we are going to use them. Pinterest stores all of its data in three core models called tables. There's the users table, the boards table, and the pins table. Since the databases at Pinterest are structured like this, we're gonna structure our SEO strategy like this as well. We'll focus and learn how to identify keywords for your profile, your boards, and your pins. Pinterest has said before that 73% of search queries are between one and three words in length. They tell us to focus on keywords which are shorter in length. And personally, I've noticed that boards with shorter titles usually outperform boards with longer titles. So we're gonna focus on shorter keywords. I like to call these level one keywords for your profile optimization, your board titles, and your pin titles. And we're gonna focus on the longer long tail keywords that I like to call secondary keywords for board descriptions, pin descriptions, and pin titles as well. There's no hard and fast rule and you can certainly use longer keywords where it makes sense to do so. But the truth is, since the keyword bubbles are gone, search queries are getting shorter. So we wanna make sure those level one keywords are completely covered and we use them to optimize our account. By now you should have identified your main keyword or your list of main keywords based on the topics that you cover on your blog or based on the products that you sell. For this example, let's say I run a blog that's all about vegetarian recipes. So my main keyword is vegetarian recipes and I'm gonna type that into the blue row of my keyword planner, which will be linked down below. Next, I'll type this main keyword into Pinterest. So if you're new to Pinterest, the old go-to method for doing keyword research was just to hit enter and you would get the guided search tool with the keyword bubbles. And now that's been replaced by explore and shop. And sometimes you can bring the keywords back and I'm gonna show you how to do that later in this video, but it doesn't always work. And that's most likely not what your average Pinterest user is doing while they're searching anyway. So we're gonna start with the Pinterest suggested search. And this is the drop down that immediately pops up and tries to guess what you're searching for. Regular Pinterest users are more likely to use this method of searching now. So that's what we need to prioritize. So first you'll type a space behind your main keyword and Pinterest will automatically give you suggestions based on what is most popular on Pinterest right now. These suggestions are your first set of level one keywords. Remember these shorter level one keywords are your most important keywords to help you optimize your profile, your board titles, and your pin titles. To record all of your keywords while you're doing your research, you can either write them down in a notebook, you can use the keyword planner spreadsheet that I'm going to link down below, or you can take screenshots of all of your results. Just keep in mind that you're going to end up with a lot of screenshots if you choose this method. Underneath my main keyword in the spreadsheet, I'll fill in the level one keywords in the gray row working horizontally. So my main keyword vegetarian recipes becomes vegetarian recipes dinner, vegetarian recipes healthy, vegetarian recipes easy, vegetarian recipes, dinner healthy, vegetarian recipes, breakfast, vegetarian recipes, dinner, main dishes, and vegetarian recipes, videos. So these seven level one keywords are gonna be your starting point for mapping out the rest of your keyword plan. 
These are absolutely the most popular searches on Pinterest right now when it comes to vegetarian recipes. Just as a side note, if your first set of level one keywords includes a keyword that you don't write about and you never plan on making content for, you can totally skip it. So let's just say I don't make videos, so I'm just gonna skip that one altogether. You want to stick strictly to keywords that are relevant to your content. Now we're gonna drill down the level one keywords one by one to get more ideas and long tail keywords for each topic. These are the secondary keywords and these will be used in board descriptions, pin descriptions, and pin titles. I'll type in vegetarian recipes dinner and then I'll write down all of the secondary keywords that come up on my spreadsheet. This next part is only available on desktop and it may or may not work for your account. You can sometimes bring the guided search tool or keyword bubbles back by toggling the drop down tab from all pins to videos. If the keywords appear, move your cursor to the left of the keyword tiles, and then you're gonna click and drag your cursor to select all of the text inside of those keyword bubbles. On your keyboard, select Command C on a Mac, when I think it's Control C on a Windows computer, or go to Edit, Copy, to copy those keywords that you have selected. Now you can go to the spreadsheet and paste all of those secondary keywords underneath the level one keyword. The neat thing about doing it this way, if you have the option, is that each keyword is gonna be a link, so you can actually click each individual one to bring up that search results page. So if there are duplicates on your list, you can just leave them, um, but you'll want to keep the keywords that showed up in the suggested search at the top. If the keyword bubbles do not show up for you, please don't panic. You can find all of the same keywords in another way. Go back to the search bar and add a space behind your level one. Now type in the letter A to reveal all the secondary keywords that begin with the letter A. Look through that list and add the secondary keywords that are relevant to your content. And you can literally rinse and repeat this process going through every single letter of the alphabet. If you find that this is just too many keywords, you can either opt to only record the first one or two results for each letter since they're listed from most searched to least searched, or you can just select the ones that are relevant to you, your topic, your blog, your website. Don't feel like you have to write down every single secondary keyword, especially if it's not relevant to your website. So from here, I'll move on to my next level one keyword, vegetarian recipes healthy. And I'll type that into the search bar, grab those first seven secondary keywords. I'll see if I can get the keyword bubbles. And if they don't show up, I'll go through the alphabet and grab keywords that make sense for the content that I create for this topic. So I will repeat the process for easy and breakfast, but looking at these, I'm going to skip over dinner healthy and dinner main dishes, since those keywords are all covered in the first column under dinner. So there's really no use in repeating them. Remember your main keyword and your level one keywords are going to determine your board titles. So if I look at my list of level ones, I have to think about any other boards that I might need to match my content. So if I'm not really sure about that, I'll go to the suggested search and go through the alphabet with just my main keyword. And immediately I see appetizers and let's pretend I have lots of appetizer recipes. So I'll definitely wanna add that to my level ones. And I'll go through and add the secondary long tails repeating the same process we just went through. You could literally go on and on endlessly collecting keywords this way. So you just wanna make sure that you cover those main topics underneath that category that you're targeting with your main keywords. So that's gonna be different for every single person. If I'm creating a new account, I like to go for at least 10 level one keywords for a client just to get a general idea of where they need to start. And then I'll create the boards from there and we'll go through that in a later lesson. So if you feel overwhelmed, 10 is a good place to stop. <laughs> you don't have to keep going and going. 